Hi, myself as Krishnachari, working as assistant professor in Department of Cyber Security, Institute of Aeronautical Engineering, Hyderabad. Today, we will have a, a question and discussion on CPU and computer arithmetic. So, the first question is uh, why is a, a floating point numbers are uh, more difficult to represent and process than integer? So, in general, uh, the numbers are classified into two types. One is the fixed point numbers and another one is a floating point number. So, the floating point number, it can be represented in a into 10 power small a. So, this is a representation of the uh, floating point number. So, that means where a is a mantissa and 10 is a base and a is a small a is a exponent. So, in this way, we can represent the floating point number. So, in floating point number, we have to show any number using this uh, three fields. That is sign, so the sign of the number, mantissa and the exponent. So, using this three, we can represent any floating point number. So, for representing the number in the floating point number, the IEEE standard, it gives the format. So, IEEE, so that means Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineering 754 standard, it gives the format for representing all these fields. And according to the format, the numbers are as shown. So, in case of any process, we have to consider mantissa and exponent separately. So, therefore, the floating point numbers are more complex to represent and process than integer. And the floating point numbers are represented in computer hardware as base 2 fraction. So, for example, the floating point number in the decimal fraction, we can represent like uh, 0 0.625 and uh, similarly the binary fraction we can represent 0 0.101 something. So the floating point representation types are two types according to the IEEE 754 standard. The first one is the single precision and the second one is the double precision. So single precision means so we are representing the floating point number using 32 bit representation and in double precision we are representing the floating point number using 64 beta. So, let us see the single precision floating point representation. So, the single precision floating point representation, it is also known as FP32 or FLOAT32. It is a, a computer number format that uses a floating radix point to express a wide range of numerical values. So, according to this uh, IEEE 754 standard. So, we are using 32 bits uh, to represent the floating point number as a single precision. So, the first bit, uh, so the MSB bit, uh, it is uh, used to represent the sign of the number and uh, the remaining, the next uh, followed by the next uh, 8 bits, it represents the exponent and uh, the remaining 23 bits, it represents the matrix. So, in this way, we can uh, represent the single precision floating point numbers. And coming to the double precision floating point number. So, in double precision uh, floating point representation, it gives more accuracy than the single precision. So, because here uh, we are using 64 bits in order to represent the uh, double precision floating point number. So, the first bit is, uh, you know, it is used to represent the sign. And next 11 bits are used to represent the exponent and the next 54, 52 bits uh, are used to represent the mantis. The next question, what is number system convert a uh, 0.3.56b uh, to the decimal and uh, 10101101.10111 uh, it is represented in binary. So, to to hexadecimal number system. So, here in the question it is asking what is number system, the definition of number system, then convert the number given in the hexadecimal to the decimal and convert the number given in the binary to the hexadecimal. So, the definition of number system means uh, the number system is simply a system to represent and express the numbers. So, using this uh, number system, we can 
represent any number or express the various types of the numbers. So convert uh, a zero three point five six b to decimal. So the pins here, the given number is in the hexadecimal. So that we are going to the convert convert to the decimal. So in order to convert to the decimal, every digit in the hexadecimal it should multiply it with a sixteen power. So that means uh, uh, before the decimal point, uh, before the decimal point, it starts with the uh, sixteen power zero, sixteen power one, sixteen power two. Similarly, after decimal point, it uh, will be sixteen power minus one, sixteen power minus two, sixteen power minus three. So in this way, so that means uh, a into uh, a a into sixteen into sixteen square. So that means a means uh, equivalent uh, value. So a is in is in the hexadecimal. So that equivalent uh, value in decimal is the ten. A is the ten. So that's why ten into ten sixteen square plus zero into sixteen power one plus three into sixteen power zero plus um, plus five into five into sixteen into minus sixteen uh, power minus one plus Six, uh, six into sixteen power minus two. So like that we are representing. So ten into two, sixteen square means so two fifty six. So ten into two fifty six, two five six zero. So like that we are adding all the uh, all the numbers. So finally you will get two five six three point three three eight six two three zero four six eight seven five. So this is a uh, in decimal. So in this way. We can convert any hexadecimal number to the decimal by taking the sixteen powers. The next one convert the given binary number into the hexadecimal number system. So, in order to convert from the binary to the hexadecimal number system, first we have to take the four a group of four bits in the binary number system. So that means I am taking as a group. So these four are one group. Next, these are one group. So remaining only one number is left. So I am adding zeros to the left of that one. So that means here I can add zeros to here. And similarly, right side also I am taking four four bits. So here right side, so only uh, one one uh, one numerical one is there. Uh, okay. So I am taking zeros to the right hand side. So zero 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 one means so its equivalent value is uh, one in decimal in hexadecimal. So zero one zero one. Five, one one zero one eight. This is written in eight four two one. So eight four twelve one thirteen. The take current uh, next one zero one 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 zero one one. So one zero one one means uh, eight plus two ten. Eight plus two ten plus one eleven. That means uh, B. So this is equal to eight. So that means uh, it's equal to one five D point. B eight. So in this way, we can convert the binary number into the hexadecimal by taking a group of four, four bits in the binary number system. Next, explain the hardware for signed magnitude addition and subtraction with the NEAT diagram. So this is a hardware implementation for the signed magnitude addition and subtraction. So here, in order to perform addition or subtraction, we require Two registers. One register is the A, and another register is the B. So here we are using signed magnitude representation. So that's why uh, the sign of the A it is stored in AS. So AS is a it is a, a sing, flip flop, single bit flip flop. Similarly, the sign of the B is uh, stored in BS. So the AS and BS are the single bit storage. Devices that means uh, they are using as a flip flop. Okay, so here if you if we assume it is a, a eight bit number, it is a eight bit number. So uh, using this hardware, we can perform both addition as well as a subtraction. So in the A register, so A register it contains the one value, and its corresponding sign will be stored in the A S. And similarly, the other value is stored in the Uh, B register and its sign is stored in the B S. Okay, so here based on this uh, mode control, it will decide the what type of operation it has to be performed, whether it is a 
addition or subtraction. So if m is equal to zero, it performs addition. It performs addition. So uh, when m is equal to zero, then uh, here this complementer will not perform any operation. So just to simply whatever the b value is there, whatever the value in the b register that will be given to the parallel adder. Similarly, the a value also it will be given to the parallel adder. So in the parallel adder, the it performs the addition operation a plus b and it gives the result. So finally, the result also it will be stored in the accumulator. Once the operation is performed in the parallel adder, the result again it will be stored in the accumulator and uh, accumulator. So accumulator is, uh, is a combination of this as and a because uh, the as is a its corresponding sign bit and the AVF add overflow. So if there is any uh, if uh, by performing addition if there is any carry then that will be stored in the AVF add overflow. Okay, so that is a addition. And coming to the subtraction. So for, for performing the subtraction, the m bit should be one. So when m is equal to one, it performs a subtraction. So when m is equal to one, the input carry will become one here. And uh, the complementer it uh, performs complement operation. So that means uh, b value will be performed complement. That means uh, it becomes b bar after performing the complementer. Then the b bar and uh, input carry plus one and uh, uh, a register value. A register value is uh, this one. So all this gets uh, added. So that means uh, a plus b bar plus one. So this is equal to a minus b. That means here we are using a two's complementer, two's complementary representation because the negative numbers we can represent in uh, various forms: uh, sine and magnitude form, sine one's complement form, sine two's complement form. So mostly we are using sine two's complementer. So we are representing the negative numbers in the sine two's complement representation. So that's why a plus b bar plus one. So that is equal to a minus b. So that means it performs subtraction operation. And then if there is any carry, then the output carry will be equal to one. But in the subtraction, the carry will not occur. Okay. So this is a hardware. Hardware implementation for the sine and magnitude addition and subtraction. Next, uh, what is scientific notation and uh, normalization? Give example. So, scientific notation is uh, a form of presenting a very large number or very small number in a simpler form. So, scientific notation means uh, it is uh, a form of uh, a re form of representing or presenting very large number or smaller number in a simpler way because uh, uh, as we know the whole numbers can be extended till infinity so but we cannot write uh, such a large or small numbers uh, on some piece of paper so that's why it is difficult to represent few numbers in the expanded form so that's why we are using a, a scientific notation so suppose if you have this one 45 lakhs. Okay. So, okay. So, 450000. Okay. So, this uh, no, number, it can be represented using this uh, scientific notation. Okay. So, this we can write 4.5 into 10 power 6. So, this is a way of representing the scientific notation. That means uh, this is a mantissa and this is a exponent so using these terms we are representing in a, a scientific uh, notation and similarly if you have a very small number 0 0.00453 so that we can represent uh, using 4.53 into 10 power minus 3 so as a number converted into scientific notation it is called uh, down to a number between 1 and 10 all of the significant uh, digits remain, remain, but the place folding zeros are no longer required. And uh, after that, uh, after scientific notation, then we will see the normalization. So normalization in a floating point number. So simply speaking, a number is normalized uh, when it is written in the form of 
a into 10 power n. So where a is a mantissa and n is the exponential. But here where the a value should be uh, a value should be greater than or is equal to 1 and less than 10. So without leading zeros in a. So that means a should not contain any leading zeros. The example 3.1415 into 10 power 3. So here <coughs> as a real number x written in scientific notation is normalized if it has a, a single non-zero digit to the left of the point, decimal point. So that means uh, for the normalization, uh, the number should have a single non-zero digit to the left of the decimal point. So that means here, if you consider this example 3.1415 into 10 power 3. So that means uh, we have a single digit, single non-zero digit to the left of the decimal point and it doesn't follow any leading zeros. So this is a way of representing the normalization. So that means of before the uh, decimal point, we should not have any zero values. We should have non-zero value. So that is a normalization in the 14 point numbers. What do you mean by completeness of instruction set? And give the reasons to choose the instructions in each category. So a set of instructions is said to be complete if the computer it includes all a complete set of the instructions. So instruction means it is a command to the processor to perform a specific task. So every instruction, every processor it has uh, some its own instruction set. Instruction set means collection of instructions. So all these instructions they are classified into various types based on the operation they perform. So the first one is the Arithmetic, logical, and shift instructions. Second one, a set of instructions for moving information to and from memory and processor registers. Third one, instructions which control the program together with instructions that sta check status conditions. Next one, input and output instructions. So, arithmetic and logic shift instructions. So these are, it performs various arithmetic and logic and shift of instructions. That means uh, arithmetic operations are addition, subtraction, multiplication, division and so on. So and uh, logical operations are uh, and or XR uh, increment, decrement. So these are all the logical operations and shift uh, uh, operations are shift instructions they perform shift operation. So shift operations are uh, logical shift, arithmetic shift, and circular shift. So that is the first one. Second one is a set of instructions for for moving data, uh, move data or information to and from memory and processor registers. So because the more the large or bulk binary information it will be stored in the memory. But finally. All the arithmetic and logical operations they are performed in the processor registers. So that's why we need to move the information from between the memory and the processor register. So for that purpose, we are using a, a data moving uh, moving instructions, the, uh, moving or uh, data transfer instructions. Then instructions which control the program together with uh, instructions that check status conditions. So some instructions that are used to for branching purpose. Branching means transferring of program control from one address to the next new address. That is called branching. This branching will take place upon checking some status conditions like uh, jump if uh, below or jump if carry, jump if no carry. So all these program control instructions, they will check the condition. So these program control instructions, they are classified into two types. One is conditional, conditional branching instructions and another one is a unconditional, unconditional instruction. So unconditional instructions are jump, JMP, call and the remaining all are the un, uh, uh, remaining all of the conditional. So that means uh, upon satisfying the condition, then only the branching will be takes place. 
and the last one are the input or output instructions so these instructions are used to interact with the external external devices like uh, some input or output devices and compare the direct and indirect addressing instructions with examples for each with the required memory reference so direct addressing mode so in direct addressing mode the address of the operand is given directly in the instruction address part of the instruction so see here so this is a format of the instruction so instruction it uh, consists of two fields op code and the address field that means this is a address of the operand so that means uh, the operand is available in the memory so in order to access this operand we require some address so that address information is given in the directly in the instruction part so that's why it is called direct addressing mode so suppose if uh, the address field contains 4500 so that means uh, 4500 is the address of the operand so that means uh, in the 4500 we have the operand so that operand will be transferred to the destination register so example add r1 comma 1001 so as per this instruction so 1001 is the it is the address of the operand so this is specified here so that means it will go to the address 1001 so that means uh, our operand is stored in this here in this location in the 1001 let assume this is a 08 is a operand so this operand it is added it is added with uh, the contents of the r1 so suppose if the r1 it uh, contains a uh, one value so this 8 plus 1 8 plus 1 9 so 9 uh, 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 finally it will be stored in the r1 register itself so the r1 content 01 it is updated with 09 so in this way the direct addressing mode will works come to the indirect addressing mode so in indirect addressing mode the address field in the instruction it contains the memory location or register where the effective address of operand is present it requires two memory accesses whereas in the previous one direct addressing mode it requires only one memory access but whereas here it requires two memory accesses in order to get the operand so the example load r1 comma at the rate 500 so that means here the address is given 500 so that means 500 is not the address of operand so this 500 location it contains the address of the memory location so it will go to the 500 location so in this we will have some 550 so 550 is a it is the address of the operand so this is a operand here so that means here the address is a 550 so it will go comes from here to here in order to access the operand so it requires two memory accesses first access is a this is one memory access and this is a another memory access so total it requires two memory accesses and uh, the difference between the direct addressing and indirect addressing is uh, the first one is a uh, address field contains the effective address of the operand so in direct addressing the address of the operand is given directly whereas in the indirect addressing mode the address field it contains the reference of effective address that means uh, it uh, the address field it gives the information related to the address of the operand second one the direct addressing mode it uh, requires only one memory access whereas in indirect addressing mode it requires two memory access so third one is a fast addressing it is a fast fast addressing because uh, in direct addressing mode we can get the operand in a, in a faster way than the indirect addressing mode because it requires only single memory access whereas the indirect addressing mode it requires two memory access so that it takes more time than the direct addressing mode and here no further classification so the direct addressing modes are no further classification 
but uh, here indirect uh, uh, address mode they are classified into again further two types that are register indirect uh, address mode and uh, indirect address mode and fifth one no further calculation is required to perform the operation so in order to get the operand no further calculation is required but in the indirect address mode it requires some calculation to get the operand to get the address of the operand next uh, classify and explain in detail about the memory reference instructions so instructions are mainly classified into three types instructions are classified into three types that are memory reference instruction uh, register reference instruction io reference instruction so instruction is a command to the processor to perform a, a specific task so first one is the memory reference instruction so this is a format of the instruction register so the size of the instruction register is a 16 bit so 0 to 15 so 15th bit is the it represents i it represents i and 12 13 14 bits represents the op code that means op code means it represents a type of operation it has to be performed and 0 to 11 it represents the address of the operand so using this op code 3 bits we can perform 2 power 3 so that means 8 uh, total 8 operations uh, we can perform so you can see here so using this 12 13 14 so we can perform total 8 operations so 0 0 0 we we can perform one operation like add then one subtraction something increment so like that total we can perform seven operations but when all the upward bits are becoming 1 1 1 then here the instructions will be uh, classified to other types like uh, uh, when when the upward all the upward bits of the upward bits are equal to 1 1 1 that means d7 when d7 is equal to 1 the instructions may be a register reference instruction or io reference instruction so up to this uh, sequence to this sequence so so from here to so all these sequences so from 0002110 all these are memory reference instructions but when the last sequence when all upward bits are equal to 1 then it may be a, a register reference instruction or io reference instruction and register reference instruction so these instructions perform the operations on registers rather than memory addresses okay so already we have seen when all upward bits are equal to 311 then it may be a, a register reference or io reference instruction but uh, how we can differentiate whether it is a, a register reference instruction or io reference instruction so uh, based on the 15th bit we can decide so if the 15th bit is equal to 0 then it is a, a register reference instruction and if 15th bit is equal to 1 then it is a, a io reference instruction so in this way we can differentiate the register reference instruction from the io reference instruction and this is a 0 to 11 It represents the register operation, and uh, the third type of instructions are input or output reference instruction. So already we know for the input or output reference instruction, the output bits should be equal to one. So twelfth bit, thirteenth, fourteenth bit should be one, and fifteenth bit should be one. So suppose if fifteenth bit is equal to zero, then it may be a, a register reference instruction. And zero to one, zero to eleven, it represents input or output operation. So in this lecture, we have discussed about some uh, questions on the computer CPU and computer uh, automatic. Thank you. Like, share, and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.